Previously on TV 101. I have never understood why you hate Craig so much. I've never understood why you like him so much. We have confiscated another piece of contraband. Good tip, Lumen. What you're seeing is a crime being committed. The person on the screen is a Roosevelt student. You took what I told you and used it against Craig. I did not. Anyone who was a real friend would know that. Tonight on TV 101, don't miss your chance to join the political party and vote by telephone in Roosevelt High's election. Grab a pencil, watch for the numbers at the end of the show, and phone in your vote. The fate of democracy hangs in the balance. Good morning. This is TV 101. Welcome to election week here at Roosevelt High. To brighten your Monday, TV 101 reporters bring you this exciting news from the campaign trail. On Friday, we'll elect a new student council to replace the scandal-plagued administration of Tad Thurston. Lame duck President Thurston has been dogged by the so-called kangaroo gate affair since October. That's when we pummeled Lincoln High 40 to nothing for homecoming amid rumors that Roosevelt's team used a stolen playbook. What did you know about the playbook and when did you know about it? That's Craig Blumen, last semester's vice president. Craig's running for student body president on a strong school spirit, law and order platform. Yeah. His running mate is last year's student council treasurer, TV 101's own Amanda Hampton. She's running on three inch heels. No way. This is Tracy Roberts and her running mate, Noah Hawkins. They're running on issues. The presidential dark horse is Russian exchange student Ivan Vladimirovich Dolomen. Dolomen. So, is this guy a commie or what? Film at 11. Chuck. Hey, just a joke. You better not cut it either. 80% of the students interviewed said they were not going to vote. But of the People TV 101 found who are voting, 60% back Craig Blumen, 35% back Tracy Roberts, and 5% support Ivan Dolo, Doleman. Ivan the Russian guy. This year, after our school election finally enters the computer age, students will be using state-of-the-art computers to select the candidate of their choice. Votes will be tabulated by computer, which should prevent anyone from messing with the ballots. This vote is strictly a demonstration. With less than a week before voters go to the polls, many questions remain unanswered. Can Craig Blumen avoid a kangaroo gate knockout? Does Ivan have a nickname? Will Tracy Roberts gain momentum? Does anybody care? Let's see. We've got an unresolved political scandal, a vice presidential candidate whose hero is Fawn Hall, a president who's graduating to pursue an acting career in Hollywood, and an apathetic electorate. You know, high school really is like life. Or maybe it's the other way around. Anybody out there care about this election? Doesn't seem like it. Does anybody in here care? Of course we care. Well, I do. Does anybody other than the candidates plan on taking part in Friday's exercise in democracy? Good. 
then you won't mind covering it as print reporters. Because we're going to start cranking out the old kangaroo courier. What? No you... video. Hey, TV and politics don't mix. Besides, I think it's time you guys learn to appreciate the written word. Hey, we signed up for TV. Read your syllabus. You signed up for journalism. I can't do this, Mr. Keegan. I'm the teacher. I can do anything I want. Well, what are you, a dictator? Oh. So now you care about the democratic process? Uh-oh. I smell an assignment. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to make Roosevelt High care about this election. Make me care. Tell us who's running and what's at stake. Marty, how many students voted in last semester's election? Only 400 out of 2,000. How do you think Tab Thurston got elected? Oh, that's not fair. He'd have won even if everyone had voted. Here's our goal. Double last semester's voter turnout. <laughs> Good luck. Heinz, you've got Tracy and Noah. It'll take a lot of imagination to get people interested in these. What are they? Position papers. Chuck Sherm, you got uh, Ivan whatever his name is. Careful, Chuck, I hear he's with the KGB. Uh, we'll be sure to tape anything suspicious for the CIA. Enough KGB, CIA, let's talk BP. Amanda, I'm afraid you won't be able to be a TV 101 reporter until after the election. But we wish you good luck and a speedy return to the ranks. Thanks. <laughs> Penny, I want you to cover Craig and Amanda. Even though I'm not a reporter, may I lodge a complaint? I think people are sick and tired of Kangaroo Gate. The Lincoln High playbook was stolen right before they played us in the homecoming game. And the Ruse did win 40 to nothing over a team which, on paper, is clearly superior in every aspect of the game. She's just out to get Craig, Mr. Keegan. This is gonna be good. Are you defending him as a reporter, a running mate, or a girlfriend? I told you. Craig has nothing to do with this. Besides, no one's even seen that stupid playbook. I have. It's no big deal. Coach keeps it with the first aid supplies. <sighs> so what? We were gonna cream them anyway. Don't you think studying Lincoln's playbook tarnishes the team's victory? Not at all. But you knew what their plays were. So did they. I'm going to have a little chat with Coach Coffee at lunch. You good? There she is, the future first lady of Roosevelt. What news from Malice 101? Now, oh, Penny won't drop this kangaroo gate stuff. Now she thinks you stole the playbook. You don't believe that? Of course not. I told her you didn't have anything to do with it. But you know, I did feel a little stupid when Chuck said that he had seen the playbook. Everybody! Let's get those posters up and out there! Remember, this kind of volunteer work looks great on those college applications. <laughs> yeah. Bender should keep his mouth shut. Well, you said the playbook didn't even exist, Craig. It doesn't. Officially. Well, officially or not, Penny's going to get it from Coach Coffee at lunch today. We can't let her do that. Oh, yeah? Now what haven't you told me? I didn't steal the playbook. But I did buy it. You what? You lied to me, Craig? I did it to protect you. Oh, protect me? Why did you have to be the one to get the playbook? You're not even on the football team. Roosevelt hadn't won a game all season. The school spirit was suffering. I thought I could help. Well, now you better think about helping yourself out of this mess. I know. If Penny Lipton gets a hold of that playbook, <laughs> She'll twist it into a big story. She'll say I stole it, and then we'll never get elected. Look, all right. So you've made some mistakes, but you're still the best candidate for president. So all we have to do is grab that playbook before Penny gets her hot little hands on it. I love it when you talk dirty politics. Can you say Ivan Vladimirovich Dolomitievsky? Uh, Ivan Vladimirovsky. Ivan Vladimir Dolokowski. Who? I love American television. Magnum P.I., Dukes of Hazard, Miami Spice. Uh, Miami Vice. Hey, you want to hear my Bill Cosby imitation? I want to know what you're doing. I'm putting a questionnaire in every locker. I want everyone's opinion on what to do if elected. Ivan, there are 2,000 lockers. In my country, government always tells people what to do. In America, people tell the politicians. Oh, my first 30 seconds sound like You're starting to sound like a politician. I told you we had to keep an eye on this guy. Excuse me. 
Can you tell me what you think about Tracy Roberts? Isn't she the one who had a moral thing about dissecting a frog? She's too squeamish to be president. You're in luck. Tracy's really gaining support, isn't she? Nah, I'm covering you guys for the rest of the campaign. Trust me, you could use a little video artistry. Grassroots campaigns always take longer to develop. And I'm ready to fertilize the masses. You just tell me when and when. Tomorrow after school, our headquarters, we're having a rally. Tracy's really gonna wow them. No, this is gonna wow them. I mean, not that I would do anything to compromise my journalistic integrity. Hey, oh, think I could bum a couple of quarters? <laughs> I saw it in a movie. Yeah, which one? All the President's Men? You know, we really came to play this year. Took it one game at a time. Those kids played their hearts out. Coach Coffey, there are reports that the allegedly stolen Lincoln High football playbook is in your office. That's a vicious rumor spread by those sore losers at Lincoln. My sources tell me that the playbook is kept right in your first aid cabinet. Let me into your office and we can lay those rumors to rest. If it were up to me, I'd let you right in. But you can't bring a camera in here. This is a gymnasium. So? Well, it's a sports venue. Restricted access. Hi, Coach. Hi, Penny. Amanda, what are you doing here? Getting out the boat. And why were you in Coach's office? Just a little uh, plumbing. Oh, good. Did you take care of those leaks? Leaks? Well, wait a minute, Craig. Come back here. I want to talk to you. Sorry, a plumber's work is never done. <laughs> if you want to see my first aid cabinet, I'll show you my first aid cabinet. Come on. Come on. I'm a busy man. It's right here. In here. I see gauze. I see cold packs. I don't see a playbook. Do you see a playbook? Must have been a bum tip. Evidently, you're not the only one who has problems with leaks. Hurry up, I've got to get the pasta maker back to home ec. Next hour, we're doing manicotti. You do it. Okay. Here goes the quarterback sneak, and out comes fettuccine. Can you make it smaller? No angel hair, no problem. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I knew I could count on you, Amanda. Mm, let's see Penny try and make a story out of this one. <laughs> I want you to vote. Only three days left to change your vote. And speaking of voting, here's a TV 101 public service announcement. Would you let him pick your lunch? Would you let her pick your clothes? <laughs> Would you let him pick your date? Then don't let someone else pick your president. Get out and vote. On the off chance you want to know who to vote for, our candidates have put together an FDR first. Campaign commercials. Why is Kooky crying? Because Tracy Roberts wants to take student council money away from our athletic teams and give it to some half-baked programs that benefit her friends. Tracy has no school spirit. Kooky knows that. Vote for me, Craig Blumen. And make Kooky the kangaroo cheer again. I like Kooky. I would never make her cry. Craig is just dragging his campaign through the mud. I do have school spirit. In fact, I even tutored the quarterback in English. But I believe that student council funds are for everyone, not just the football team. TV 101 wants to know if Roosevelt students believe what they see and hear in campaign ads. You've seen the commercials. What do you think? I really think Tracy's got no school spirit. Craig's a dirty campaigner. I hear Tracy's cruel to animals. I knew Tad Thurston. Craig Blumen, you're no Tad Thurston. In other political news, school police officer Bud Matthews and Skip the Janitor have each made election week endorsements. 
As a duly authorized semi-police officer, I like the way the school's been run lately, especially the student watch program. Uh, but of course, as a duly authorized semi-adult, I'm not allowed to vote, but if I could, I would vote the Blumen Hampton ticket. Officially, I'm neutral, but I support any kid that runs a clean campaign. Although, if I were to vote, I think I'm leaning towards the Russian kid. He seems honest, and we need a guy, should the case arise, that uh, can sit down and talk to Gorbachev, the other Russian guy. A final note, because Friday's convention is at 2 o'clock, all fifth period classes will be canceled. So, fifth period will become homeroom, sixth period will be first period, and first period will be snack. Unless you have woodshop. A written transcript of what I just said will be available in homeroom after sixth period. This is Vance Checker signing off. For TV 101. What's the matter? No scoop today? Hey, what happened to that smoking playbook? <laughs> well, you tell me. It doesn't matter anyway. I've got other leads to follow. Oh, you're like what? Sorry. I promised my source confidentiality. You need a better angle? I can move the sign. No problem. I just want to be ready when everybody shows. And they're going to show. Welcome. You've taken the first step. You're backing the best. Tracy is the candidate of substance. Don't believe those polls. Oh, Tracy's going to turn them around. With your help. Any questions? Do you know where the pep club's meeting? I'm lost. That's the next room over. Oh, if you join, I can get you a uniform at cost. You want to volunteer? Oh, one foot in the door and I'm insulted. Tracy Roberts, Noah Hawkins, Milo Trump. Aren't you the guy who's been selling birth control out of his locker? Well, Milo's very public service oriented. My card? Keep a Trump in your wallet? Well, actually, um, I asked Milo to stop by because of his other business interests. Oh, yes, perhaps you're familiar with my work? Ah. Homecoming Queen, Snow Princess, and May Queen. Before and after. It's amazing what a little strategically placed duct tape can do. What's this got to do with us? Campaigning is just another kind of beauty contest. Not this one. Look, you guys are great, but if you want to be Craig Blumen, you need a little flash and style. Instead of substance and ideas? Substance and ideas you've got. What you need are polish, packaging, and me as your image consultant. But we're not running on our image, we're running on issues. And we don't need a consultant to tell us how to do it. A car in every garage, a chicken in every pot, and a survey in every locker. Can't wait to hear from people. You've got other things to worry about. Like what? Like your name. It's too long. You've got to change it. But this is America. Even someone with a funny sounding name could be a president. Tell that to Michael Dukakis. People want to vote for someone with a strong, dynamic, short name. My name is Ivan Vladimirovich Dolomantievsky. You're the only one who can pronounce yeah, it. Probably won't even fit on the ballot. Trust me, changing your name is an American tradition. Even John Wayne made up his. Uh -huh, no way. Not the Duke. Look, what's Ivan in English? John. What's your last name in English? If he says Wayne, I'll slug him. No, there's no English translation. Ah, uh, OK, spell your last name. G O L. -O Hold it, I got it. Okay. Roll tape. We're rolling. Students of FDR, meet John Doe. Are you sure the silhouette stuff really works? Don't worry, no one at Lincoln High will recognize you. I don't know. I'm still worried about nostrils. Nostrils? Nostrils McCafferty. Varsity offensive tackle. 6'2, 240. He slits his nose before every game. He wants to make himself bleed. If he recognizes me, he'll make me bleed. Believe me, you're nothing but a silhouette. Now, who did you sell the playbook to? I'm glad to get a chance to rat on this guy. He says he'll give me 400 bucks for the playbook, 200 on delivery, another 200 if the marsupials win the homecoming game. <laughs> I don't know about you, but from where I'm sitting, 400 bucks is big money for a couple of lousy X's nose. <laughs> That's investing money. You know how much for Now she's talking to a shadow. Real believable. Penny assured me this was a reliable source. Who did you sell the playbook to? Craig Blumen. He pays me two bills. The ruse win. But you think I ever get my other 200? No way. 
Where did Craig get the money? He says it was student council, though, so I figures it was a lie. Instead, I get burned. You guys at Roosevelt broke or what? We had a deal. As far as I'm concerned, every student at FDR owes me a dime. With just three days to go before the presidential election, it looks like Blumen's candidacy is in jeopardy. Now here's Vance Checker with today's announcement. I have an announcement. Those cameras belong to Roosevelt High. As a student at FDR, I demand equal time. We're in the middle of a broadcast. I have a right to answer these scurrilous charges. Scurrilous? Hey, Craig has been slandered. Let him speak. What should I do? Keep rolling. You have no right to be here. You have no right to slander me. What are you afraid of, the truth, Penny? Let's listen to what he has to say. I helped obtain the playbook, sure. I knew how important winning the homecoming game could be to FDR. But I didn't use student council money to pay for it. And Penny Lipton has no proof that I did. In fact, I paid for it with my own money. As student council's treasurer, a man can tell you that because she must balance the student council checkbook every month, there's not a dime missing, is there? Um, every penny, I mean cent, is accounted for. Now this is an election. Vance Checker here. Reports that Craig Blumen obtained the Lincoln High playbook have sent his popularity soaring. Do you think it was okay for Craig Blumen to buy the Lincoln playbook and will it affect your vote? Are you kidding? A college scout saw me gain 120 yards. Thanks for the scholarship, Craig. You got my vote. He had the guts to do what he thought was right. Craig Blumen is a man of principle. And he's got the haircut to prove it. What did Craig ever do to you? You reporters are always buttoning in where you're not welcome. When asked to describe the best thing that happened last semester, 30% of FDR's likely voters replied to the earthquake that closed the school for two days, while 70% said, shutting out Lincoln in the homecoming game. <laughs> How does it feel to finally do something positive? Hey, Penny, I, I just want to thank you for the great job you're doing getting out the Blumen vote. I, I couldn't do better myself. Why don't you follow me around and tell everyone more facts about me? <laughs> Craig has the moral fiber of an amoeba. How can he be treated like a hero? You shouldn't slander lower life forms. Maybe nobody does care. I care. All you care about is winning. True. But what good are all your causes unless you're in a position to do something about them? What do you think? Does the phrase, wake up and smell the coffee, mean anything to you? Political rule number one, get elected. I've taken the liberty of designing a little ad campaign. Could be a comeback. Ta-da. Oh, my God. Cheeky? No, 30% of the students at Roosevelt High are black. You have to solidify your base. I don't remember, you have to get elected first. Wrong. First you gotta be yourself, then you get elected. But we're all set up. You can't just back out now. Wrong again. If 
find yourself another candidate, I quit. Sherman! Sherman! Great news. Listen to this. Dear Russian guy, why don't they serve frozen yogurt in a cafeteria instead of ice cream? Uh, that's, that's great. What did the others say? What others? That's all you got? You passed out 2,000 of those. Well, the point is that I got a reply. I connected. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you're not going to win. Is that why you think I'm running? Well, yeah, that's kind of the point here. Hmm. I never thought it was about winning or losing. I thought it was about participating. Isn't that what democracy is all about? You really are John Dell. Okay, Bloomin, you wanted me to follow you. You got it. under surveillance. You lead such an exciting life. I've been following him all day and I think I'm onto something. What's he doing? Oh, he's loosing his hair. Oh, no, not that. Anything but that. Not the styling moose. Timing his own vice president. <laughs> I had no idea Craig was such a dedicated campaigner. Some guys will do anything for a vote. So, what am I going to tell Amanda? Better hope her credit cards aren't maxed out. I feel a mega shop coming out. Does she really think I'm out to get her? run it if you're asking me whether you should be a friend or a journalist that's something only you can decide as for running this story i think there's someone else who should see it first amanda i've got a a, a story to show you it's about craig oh more good news you know penny if you don't stop this will turn out to be a landslide you better take a look at this. Come on, people. We're on less than a minute. Let's go. Stedman's gonna freak. She won't run it. You wanna bet? I'm your teacher. <laughs> okay. A quarter says she does the right thing and pulls a story. Buck says she runs it. You're on. Well, that's Carol Thompson. Oh, she probably just needed a shoulder to cry on. Her boyfriend probably dumped her or something. <laughs> is that all you see? What I see is someone who's really jealous, Penny. Amanda, open your eyes! the story if you don't want me to. Amanda? Fifteen seconds. I don't care what you do. I wanted to give you a chance. Go ahead, run it. See if I care. Okay, I will. Fine. 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 Penny. Welcome to TV 101. This morning we have a special report on Craig Blumen, a candidate who gives new meaning to the term press the flesh. But first, two political announcements from the candidates, beginning with Tracy Roberts. I'm 
Tracy Roberts. And if you elect me president, I promise you'll never find student council boring again. We're the video generation. So why keep electing the same old candidates? We need someone who can lead us into the 1990s. Don't stop now. Vote Tracy Roberts and go all the way. Did you have anything to do with this? It's cool, huh? What do you mean? Your ad is demeaning to Tracy and to every girl around here. That's not cool. And now, a political announcement from Craig Blumen and his running mate, Amanda Hampton. Amanda and I believe it's morning at FDR. It's a new day, a time for leaders who say the right things and look right saying them. We'll be more than president and vice president. We'll be a team, your team. Like Charles and Diana. Sean and Madonna. Ollie and Fawn. We care about each other. And we'll care about you. And now with her special report, Penny Lipton. My report on Craig Blumen will not be running today due to technical difficulties. Vance. Right. Very technical. So technical, in fact, we're going to have to end the broadcast. This is Vance Checker signing off. Excuse for a moment, please. Are you going to be okay? Is there anything I can do? No, I just... gotta go. Everything you need to nail Craig. So your deep pockets. Is that what you need? This is perfect. We begin our election day coverage with this late-breaking report from Penny Lipton. Craig Blumen says he paid for the Lincoln playbook with his own money. Here's proof he used ours. This is a student council check made out for $200 and signed by Blumen. The check is made out to this Lincoln student whose identity we are protecting. Yeah, that's the check. I told you Blumen used your dough. What, you wouldn't take my word for it? A copy of the check has been given to Mr. Stedman and members of the Student Council Advisory Board. Principal Stedman has promised a full student-faculty bipartisan investigation. Vance? So, 
Is Craig's lead in jeopardy? Is this the break Tracy needs? Or will voters go for John Doe? Find out when TV 101 brings you gavel to gavel convention coverage beginning at 2. See you there. Penny really nailed Craig Lumen. Well, that should guarantee his victory. Relax, Keegan. You're taking all of this a little too seriously. Your politics is a serious business. Now, they're too young to be cynical. It's only a high school election. Today, bake sales, tomorrow leader of the free world. Do you realize every one of these kids is going to be old enough to vote in the next presidential election? I don't recall the weight of the world resting heavily on your shoulders, senior year. The slated candidates that year were weenies. Maybe, but endorsing a military coup is not what I would have called a prudent editorial decision. It was a long time ago. Besides, I've learned it's too easy not to care. Sounds like you've also learned what happens when you don't. I'm going to allow these candidates to speak until this unruly mob begins to behave like a reformed electorate. We've come to the end of the campaign trail, and it's almost time for the people to speak. But first they've got to shut up so we can hear the candidates. Shut up and down! Wait a minute, Vance. It looks like Mr. Stedman is ready to introduce the first candidates. <laughs> Evidently, he's realized an unruly mob and an informed electorate are one and the same thing. Take it away, Ed. Now, as, now, as these, these candidates, candidates speak one, one last time, time in their, their quest for, for your support, support I, I ask only that you, the, the voter, voter, consider their words carefully, because the decision you make today may alter the course of history here at Roosevelt High. And now, our first candidate. shouldn't have talked her into doing that video. It was a stupid idea. You two really had something to say. People would have listened. Maybe they still will. For those of you who don't recognize me out of leather, I'm Tracy Roberts. Some joke, huh? Well, the joke's on me. I guess, I guess that when, when a candidate, candidate lets her desire, desire to win beat, beat out her desire to do what's right, right then it's time she got out of politics. politics. That's, That's why, why I'm withdrawing from the race, and I'm asking you to cast your right and vote for someone who refused to sell out. out. No, no Hawkins. Hawkins. Congratulations, Vice President Hampton. Uh, what, what Tracy, Tracy said, said was, was true. true. She made, she made a mistake, a mistake. And, so and so did I. I. Hers, Hers was, was trusting others, others and mine was not trusting in her. I should have known, known that she'd do the right thing. thing. I, agree I agree that you, you should, should vote, vote for me, me. but as Tracy, Tracy Roberts' vice presidential running mate. Yeah, yeah, come on. Tracy may have won over a few undecided voters in that last speech. What do you think, Ed? Well, of course I'm nonpartisan, but I couldn't agree with you more. I thought that Tracy was selfless, committed, and statesmanlike. It reminded me of General Douglas MacArthur's farewell address. I had the same thought. Uh, Mr. Stedman, Van, sorry to interrupt, but Craig Blumen is about to speak. care about the woman. It's Amanda I'm worried about. Well, that was a nice speech, but I'm a little confused. Are they in the race or out of the race? At this rate, it probably doesn't matter. About this phony check business. I want to end this rumor once and for all. Now, you all know my running mate and last semester's treasurer, Amanda Hampton. As treasurer, she can account for every cent in the student council's fund. Amanda, let's set the record straight. 
up to Craig. The story Penny Lipton reported is true. Craig stole student council funds to buy the Lincoln High playbook. All right, Amanda! Kevin, we're supposed to be impartial. Forget that. She's such a kidder. I, I, I think what Amanda is trying to say is... What I'm saying is that you lied to me, and you lied to them. You want to be the big man on campus, so you stole our money and bought the playbook. And here's what's left of it. And I want to say this. Clear enough so even you won't be confused. I'm out of the race. Any comments about young Mr. Blumen? The phrase, let him twist slowly in the wind, comes to mind. Amanda? Amanda, wait up. You know, this isn't a good time to say I told you so, Penny. It's a good time to say I think that was a gutsy thing to do. You know, you'll probably think this is dumb, but I trusted Craig. I thought he really cared about me. Look, Craig is a jerk. He doesn't deserve you. Yeah, well, he's a cheap jerk. When he said that he'd paid for the playbook himself, I knew something was wrong. We always go Dutch. <laughs> I should have known. We were right all along then. Maybe, but I couldn't have proven a thing without your help. Deep pockets. How did you know it was me? Amanda, who else wears $120 Giannini pumps to high school? <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're killing me, boy. <laughs> Next time I run for office, I'm wearing flats. <laughs> Sad to be an American. Well, just like every student assembly I've ever been to, things have gotten out of hand. Our final candidate, Russian exchange student Ivan Vlad Vladismir something or other, a.k.a. John Doe, is facing an ugly mob on the convention floor. For me or anyone else. What about enough of this? What are you doing? Look, everyone, my friend Chuck Bender. Shut up! The next, the next guy, guy that has my friend is gonna get his head ripped off. And his name ain't John Doe either. It's Ivan Vladimirovich Dolomenchevsky. Chuck. Chuck Bender, you said my name right. You're the first person to pronounce my name right in America. Uh, yeah, well, don't ask me to do it again, all right? No, I won't ask you that. But I will ask you to join my ticket. Come, run with me. Be my vice presidential running mate. What the heck, I got a free period. I'm announcing my candidacy and throwing my head into the ring. It's not your head, it's your hat. You throw your hat into the ring. So we need another vice president with a D average. This is Glasses, and this is the destroyer. This is America. Who the rest of just keep smiling at? Why do I feel like I just stepped into the Twilight Zone? You're not in another dimension, you are in high school. This certainly is a strange turn of events. Is this situation covered by the student council bylaws? Can Chuck toss his hat or head into the ring at this late stage of the game? Well, it's highly unusual, but what the hell? I mean, the heck. A great man once said, a democracy works, nobody quite knows. It is the worst form of government in the world. Well, it's all over but the computerized voting. Any final thoughts? Well, 
Only that uh, hearing the words of Winston Churchill warms the cockles of this old principal's heart. I remember the first time I heard those words. I was sitting by my father's knee and stroking a copy I'd just been given called Rascal. This is Penny Lipton with a TV 101 special election update. Well, it's after school and the votes are pouring in as we anxiously await today's election results. That's right, Vance. With over 90% of the votes counted, it's still too close to call. How's it going, Marty? We should have the final results any second now. Uh-oh. What? What's wrong? I don't know. Something weird's going on. There's a computer virus that's eating the votes. What? 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 Can't you stop it? I'm trying to back it up to the disk, but it won't respond to my command. Well, do something. Pull the plug. It's too late. Like, oh, I can't believe it. The one time I vote and it gets eaten. Well, now what do we do? Well, as you might have guessed by now, we here at TV 101 are in a jam, and only you folks at home can help us out. We've got an election, but no votes. So we're asking you, the home viewer, to call in with your vote for student council president. No, I'm not kidding. To place your vote, simply call the 900 number on the screen for the candidate of your choice. You'll be charged 50 cents for each phone-in vote, of which CBS's proceeds will be donated to a charity. Dial 1-900-720-6151 to vote for Tracy Roberts. 1-900-720-6152 to vote for Craig Blumen. Or 1-900-720-6153 to vote for the, uh, Russian guy. So help pick Roosevelt High student body president by phoning in your vote now. We'll announce the winner on next week's show. Thanks. Next on TV 101. Why would I want to do a song? You always do. Yeah. Well, not tonight. Come on, let's party. What's going on with him? It could be burnout. Teachers hit the wall, too. Robin Zimmer, this is TV 101. TV 101, Robin Zimmer. Could you get me a whole ounce? The present. Can't tell anyone about this. Later tonight, be here for the show Time Magazine called TV's Roughest, Toughest, most entertaining crime series, Wise Guy, with Jerry Lewis starring tonight. Now stay tuned for President Reagan's address, followed by The Equalizer.